Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Digital Plantation, where, of course, the Internet is in of itself one big digital plantation. I hope you realize that because it sure enough is. <laughs> I'm your host, Dwayne, and I hope you're having a wonderful day in this week of April the 27th, 2023. I don't know what the weather's like where you are, but it's jumping back to the cold front now. All of a sudden, I don't know. But, you know, that's spring and, you know, then when spring, then when summer comes and then we're going to be have something to say about it being too hot. But, hey, I'm, I'm glad for it either way. I'm glad to be here for another day. Well, I'm again glad that you guys can click in. Remember, this point, this podcast, you can hear it right here exclusively or well, almost exclusively right here on YouTube. And uh, we have a whole section on our YouTube platform that's dedicated just for podcasts. So you can check that out right there. I will also be uploading these podcasts on our SoundCloud page. So you can go over there to soundcloud.com and do a search for journeyman and woman and you'll find it there. We have a separate platform or a separate playlist for uh, digital plantation on um, podcast. So you can check it out there as well. So anyway, so today we're going to talk about um, it's a post I did on the, um, on our community page here on YouTube. And um, I think it's, uh, it's not just me. I mean, it's, I think it's where I'm, the more I'm out here, I'm running across many, many more people here who are beginning to reanalyze, if you will, certain things that we have been told and, um, and certain things that we have accepted as fact without necessarily looking at it on our, ourselves, you know, and just accepting things as fact. And, you know, as a black man here in America, you know, from the beginning, I mean, you're talking over 400 years, we have been fed a whole lot of lies, a whole lot of lies. So it should be by now nature to us to question everything, everything that we're being told. It's not to say you don't believe anything. It just simply means you got to question everything. And so that's what you're seeing right now. In this time period that we're in right now, people are, are 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 questioning a whole lot of stuff. I mean, you got some people who are questioning whether or not if they're even of Africa. You know, you got people who are saying we're not of Africa at all. In fact, we you know we, all of our lineage, everything, it started right here in the United States. And so you have people who are embracing that. Then you also have people who are embracing that. They're not African either. <laughs> In fact, they'll say that we're Hebrew, meaning that we came by way of Israel. And then from Israel, we went to Spain and Portugal. And then from Spain and Portugal, we jumped on the ship and ended up here. And so you have people who are embracing that as well. And you can go all over the place with this. I mean, there are people who are just, you know, embracing whatever in their pursuit of truth. So you don't really get mad. I mean, sometimes it can be a little bit challenging not to get mad at some folks. But when you step back and look, you know, um, for some people, they'll look at it and say, man, these are some very confused folks, <laughs> you know, and um, and they just don't know what's going on. Well, if you consider our history, maybe you'll begin to understand. So a lot of this, you know, you just got to let people be and people will, you know, eventually, hopefully We'll begin to figure things out, but whatever course you take, you know, and those that are listening to me with this, um, the one thing is for certain a journey, any journey that you're going to take in pursuit of the truth has to first begin with exposing the lies. You got to sweep away any and all lies. And, um, and that can be quite painful. Why? Because you, have been in there are certain lies that have been ingrained in you from jump that you have actually embraced as truth. And so once you start digging in a little bit and start realizing, wait a minute, these things I've been embracing, <laughs> they've been lies, you know, so it can be, so that can be painful and coming to the realization that what you've been told actually wasn't true at all. You know, and so so that is something. And I think that, like I said, when you step back and, and look and you realize that, man, you know, this is what you're seeing right now. I, I mean, and it's not just black people. I mean, it's people all over that I'm seeing questioning a lot of things. 
And, you know, when you look at the designers and the people behind this matrix of life that we live in right now, this matrix world we live in, I mean, it's quite natural. You know, I would find it almost crazy for someone not to question the things that they've been told. I mean, we can go through the list right now. You know, there's some things that, you know, on this plantation right here, you know, they won't allow me to question. You you understand what I'm saying? But you and I know, you know, that there are certain things, there are certain people, you know, individuals that you bet not say anything about them. Because if you do or you dare question a narrative, because if you question a narrative, oh, my goodness, you are going to get into a lot of trouble. Like we used to say in school. Yep, exactly. But we can't be like that as a human being. You cannot fully grow. You're born as a human being. You are born being inquisitive. That's what you're born. You, you're born being inquisitive. Case in point, when you look at a baby, for example, babies are always putting things in their mouth. And we look at them like, oh, you just so stupid. Crazy. No, 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 no. That's how you learn. That's our test tube, if you will. Our mouth was actually the test tube that the Most High gave us and how to explore and to learn about our environment. That's why food is still very important to this very day. You understand? And so even as a child, we were born always being very inquisitive, you know, to various degrees, of course, but, you know, but nonetheless, as a child, that's how we were born. We were born wanting to learn more about our environment. And depending on the household that you grew up in, some parents will say, don't you do, don't you do that? Don't you go over there? You know, you know, and just all of a sudden now you're boxing in your child, their mindset to where they're like, okay, well, there's certain barriers I I can't even explore, you know, whatever it may be. Or on the other side, you may have to grew up in a household where the parent is like, hey, listen, just go for it. You know, so, you know, hopefully you're somewhere in between there, (laughs) you know, but um, but nonetheless, this is a characteristic that should always be with you. Not just when you're a child, but it should carry with you for the rest of your life. You should always be someone that's inquisitive, always asking questions, always wanting to discover new things. You should always be like that. So if you are part of something, if you're part of a system that will slap you on the hand, if you dare question the narrative that's within the system, then you might be in some big trouble there because you shouldn't be a part of anything that won't allow you to question things. And some of you who may have grown up or, you know, maybe you have years of experience in the church, for example, I think you know what I'm talking about. If you dare question the pastor, oh, you don't want to do that. You know, there's something wrong with you now. You, 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 you slip in here now. Don't you dare do that now. You can't touch the man of God, you know, with all of that, right? No, we should always be, you know, be respectful, of course, but we should always be someone that, an individual that asks questions because that's how you learn. There's things, narratives that are given. Even if I sat here and wrote down a narrative, you may agree with some of it. But there's going to be other parts. You may say, you know, I got a question about this. And, you know, some of the narrative givers sometimes that are out here, because they have such thin um, uh, self-esteem, I don't know what you want to call it, but, you know, where if they dare, if you dare question them on anything, you disagree with them on anything, oh, this is going to be a full attack. And for those of you who have followed this platform, you know what I'm talking about. You just question something and all of a sudden it's, uh, it's, it's a full attack like you done blew up their house or something. But we cannot be so so it's dangerous, especially now in this time that we're in right now. It's dangerous for you or me or anybody to be a part of anything where you are not allowed to question and to investigate on your own. On this platform, we always try to uh, encourage our people to always question and to investigate on your own. I can sit up here and give you a whole word salad right now of different things that I've learned and all of that. But if you don't take the initiative, if you don't take the time to investigate that on your own, to verify what I'm saying is true, 
then it's, it's all waste of time. You understand what I'm saying? You're not growing. It's just, you know, when I look at the, the, the numbers, if you will, you know, here on YouTube of the, um, how much time the average person pays attention to per video per video. Um, you know, if I do an hour video, it may be the average may be 20 minutes. And then that's just not me. You know, you can get like, Oh snap, that's me. I, I got to do something different. <laughs> oh God. You know, not really. I mean, it's, but it's across the board. I mean, there's articles on this because we live in a society where people, there's tension spans are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. That's why you've noticed on our platform here on YouTube, we have been focusing a lot on shorts because <laughs> if you won't listen for an hour, maybe you'll listen for a minute. <laughs> But anyway, what we're going to do now, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, I'm going to we're going to put forth a story, if you will, of something I found. Wink, wink. And then we're going to chat about it just for a little bit. You are listening to the Digital Plantation right here on YouTube. I'll see you right after the break. So um, I want you know him to be a part of this, and he wrote some of the backstories on this as well. He said, "I said while Anthony and Serenity arrived at their grandparents' house, they were all ready to sit down at the back porch like every Saturday to eat cookies, drink her cold, yummy teas in color." All right. So anyway, now we're gonna, and then it jumps into the some of the uh, pages of the book here. So um, I said, Zari and Major met when they both worked for the same trucking company. One day, they decided to start their own trucking company. And this is the, the, the recurring theme you're going to see throughout this coloring book, is that we want our children to see a, a, a man, a black man, and a black woman working together and building something. So in this coloring book, throughout this coloring book, it's going to be, you're going to see this recurring thing coming over and over again. Here is the uh, book again. It is called... Um, Reach for the Stars coloring book. It's a forever coloring book. All right, we're back. Thank you so much for tuning in. That's right. It's called the Reach for the Stars coloring book. And you can find that right over on Chalk Stock. And I'll spell that for you. It's C H O C S T O C K. Let me spell that again. Someone's going to throw in a K there. C-H-O-C-S-T-O-C-K dot art. And you're going to find we got a coloring book there. And, you know, the message spoke for itself right there. But not only that, we just introduced two image packs, uh, one of which is uh, Black Inventors. And what we did is we created something. My, when I say we, I'm talking about my son and I. We created um, an image. We're creating an image repository. Of images that you can use, you know, it's you you purchase the pack, of course, and I'm talking about as low as nine ninety eight, you know, um, images that you can use for your projects, for your social media, whatever. It's all here for you, and um, you can use it for whatever. Because we got tired of just, you know, when we would look for certain wholesome images that showed us in a positive light that didn't look so much canned. You know what I'm saying? And so we created this platform where you can purchase images for your projects for whatever. You know, if you want to make cards, mugs, whatever. And uh, and we have that too. And so, um, but yeah, it's, um, so yeah, so we just created one. One, it's called the Black Inventors, you know. And so we focused, we featured, you know, uh, um, just as a very imaginative um, take on Black Inventors, you know, from past, present, and future, Right. And then we did another one for the mothers, you know, so that's the mothers. It's called a mother's love pack. Both of these packs have 30 images in them for nine ninety eight. Check it out. It's at chockstock.art. All right. And again, that's C-H-O-C-S-T-O-C-K dot art. All right. Let's go ahead and get on back here. And so um, I did a post here uh, recently. 
And uh, let me pull this thing up here. And I'm going to read this for you, but I'm going to read it in another way. Okay. You're going to, we, I, I, you know what? I, I don't think I can do justice. Maybe I'll find someone else to do this here. I, we got to set the mood here right quick here. Hold on for a second. We're going to set the mood here. All right. You're going to see what I mean in a moment here. Black Jack David came a riding by, sang so sweet and gaily. Made the green wood around him. Now, boy. I hope you understand why I had to enslave you, beat you, separate you from your family, give you my name, rape you, your women and your children, poison you, experiment on you, steal from you. You see, according to this book right here, written and printed and distributed by my pappy and his ancestors you, you were cursed people meanwhile i was preserving it as your history book we call it the bible now you better guard it with your life now go on now get <laughs> that was by mr billy lynch <laughs> that's right ladies and gentlemen that was from billy lynch you let me know if you can find him somewhere. I think he's hanging with Willie, Willie Lynch somewhere. Anyway, so yeah, I did this post here uh, recently. And it was more or less of an object lesson. Because, you know, we can talk about these different systems. But when we're talking about our people, but not just our people, it's really society. I mean, we really go into this on our other platforms over on mybontube.com. I think if we're going to really talk about something, we need to look at this thing called the Bible. And I've talked about this many times before on this platform. Uh oh, we got some more sound going on here. What's going on here? Oh, okay. There we go. Um, because here's the thing that I want you as the listener to understand. And we got to realize this because this right here is fact. When we came over, when they, when these Europeans came and enslaved us and put us on those ships and they brought us over here to the United States or America, whatever they called it at that time, the new world, they brought us over here. And when they brought us over here, they did everything like that was just described to you in that reading I just did. The one thing that we did not have when we came over was a book or scrolls. We knew nothing about a man called Jesus. We knew nothing about Yah. We knew nothing about that. Now, for some people, listen, that's a lie. Because if you go to the slave books, you know, the, the, the slave, uh, what you call it, the slave uh, records. This is one one. This is one that I do want to address here. If you go to the slave records, you'll see that all the slaves had the name. Many of them had the name Yah in them or L. You know, because this is proof. This serves as proof that, yes, we are the people of the book because of that. But all it will take for you, ladies and gentlemen, is for you to spend five minutes, five minutes of your time. You can get off right now. You can do this yourself. And I want you to do a search for the word Yah, the origin of the word Yah, or the origin of the word El. And what you're going to find isn't going to be what you think you're going to find. Both of those are actually deities, specifically Canaanite deities. Yah, Y-A-H, Yahweh, all of them. Any derivative of the word Yahweh is of the Canaanite, is a Canaanite deity. Same thing with El. Same thing. So both of these were Canaanite deities. All it takes for you is a few minutes to look this up. Okay, so if anything, if those names, you know, by the fact that these names were ending with Y-A-H, tied them to a, and since now we can establish that, that if you want to use the argument that, okay, that means that these people were subject to Yah. Okay, well, like I said, again, don't take my word for it. Look it up yourself. 
So when you look at the word Yah, then use that same logic. Now that we have just um, opened up the, the fact that Yah was actually a Canaanite deity, then you got to stick with your same logic because it also means, then, then it must mean that they were subjected to this Canaanite deity. I know you don't want to hear that, but I'm just using the logic that's, that's being put out there. But the fact remains when it comes to where the origin of the, those words come from. So that's just a sampling there. That's just the beginning. So when we came over, we were not speaking Hebrew. We weren't speaking, you know, um, about stories of Joshua. And, you know, we weren't speaking about, jo think about all these names, even the names, Mary, Joseph, you know, Paul, you know, all of these names that were supposedly in the part of the world that all of these names are European names. Think about it. Even the name Michael, the archangel Michael. It's a European name. So when you look at the Bible from this in its entirety, you're going to find that when we came over, again, it we did not bring this book. This book was brought to us. It was, in many ways, it was forced upon us. Do you understand what I'm saying? It was forced upon us. And so we not only learned it, but we embraced it and called it our own. And so it wasn't until, and, I, and I've done videos on this, it wasn't until the late 1800s where you will find black people here in the United States who began to start declaring, making the declaration that they were the Hebrews of the Bible. But prior to that, you will not find any record of that. Not only that, you know, another thing people like to point to is, well, you know, they used to name themselves after people in the Bible. Well, again, the stories in the Bible, many of the stories that are in the Bible, they resonate with us because when you're dealing with oppression, things like that, that's why you'll find a lot of uh, um, um, slaves at, named after Moses and, you know, anything like that. It's because we identify with the story, but it does by identifying with the story. Don't mean that that's the story. If I name my cat Shakespeare, it doesn't mean that my cat was Shakespeare. You understand what I'm saying? It just means there was something about that story that resonated with you. You understand what I'm saying? But once you start diving in and begin to really investigating for yourself, the, the history of this book that was given to us and not starting from a place of this book is 100% fact. You're going to come up with something completely different. Do you understand what I'm saying? See a lot of our people out here today, we, any discussion when it comes to history, it starts off with, you know, when you're talking about history, there's certain facts that you stand on, you know what I mean? And then from there you build a case. Well, when we talk about the Bible, the Bible is, is in many, in the minds of most people, it's been established as it's an unquestionable fact even though there aren't too many uh, um, external books historically that can validate many of the things that are stated in the Bible. I'm talking about events now. So even the Bible itself says something. It says this, it says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be what established. Okay. All right. Okay. I think that's a good recommendation i really do so let's use that on the bible itself how many witnesses do we have externally that can validate this right here what what's being what has been told to us the thing that we are embracing and you could say the same thing about the um the quran the same thing about the quran any holy book that has been given to us I'm challenging you today to start doing your own homework and to investigate, ask questions. People are going to get mad. People are going to get upset. You may get mad and upset. But the but facts at the end of the day, see, for me, I'm about truth, 100% truth. 
I want truth over everything, over anything, period. And I, my hope and prayer is, is that you are the same way. But see, when you say that, when you make that declaration that you're about truth, you got to understand what you're also accepting is the responsibility to embrace it, whether if it makes you feel good or it makes you feel bad. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you can't just say, I'm just for truth. Well, yeah, okay. Truth is a two-edged sword. So again, going back to the historical fact that this thing that they is referred to us, that they call the Bible, which means the book. When you start investigating, when you start asking questions about it, you're going to be um, quite challenged. I'll just say that. But see, for those that are listening, for many of you are listening, you may never heard people say this before. Or if you did hear someone say something, you automatically rebuked it. Oh, you letting the devil speak through you right now. Again, go back to what we said in the beginning of this um, podcast. You are instinctively the most high created you instinctively to always ask questions, always ask questions. And that's what all I'm saying here today is to be that same person. If you're ever remember what I said earlier, too, if you're part of anything that will slap you on the wrist for dare even challenging or asking a question. Then chances are you might want to reconsider that system you're part of. All right, family, listen, you guys take care and thank you again for tuning in to the digital plantation. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Thank you.